Hi there. This is Esther. I'm a surface designer and illustrator. I love to make art and teach others my process. All right. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a little fuzzy textured liner brush. And the first thing I want to do is to create a line. So you can use your line segment tool over here, or come over to forward slash on your keyboard. Just click and drag. If you want it to be horizontal, you can hold shift key while you're dragging before releasing, but it's not necessary because this little line will just be our reference. Click on the stroke to make sure stroke is in front and click on a very dark color, which is black. And I do want to make sure my stroke width is one point. This won't be our brush, but it'll be our reference. Because we're in vector program, sometimes when we zoomed in like 20, 100%, it's still really crisp and we can lose our perspective in terms of the relative size of our thing. We don't want to make 2000 pixel brush that is not usable as a liner. So I'm just going to press M on my keyboard or press on this icon to create a rectangle. Just basically a pretty skinny one that's slightly wider than this guy. So I do want the fill color to be black and the stroke color to be none. So I'm just going to zoom in a tiny bit so you can see. So basically I would say this is about three pixel or three to four pixels in height. The next thing I want to do is to select my little rectangle and bring the fill color to front and come over to gradient tool or you can press G or you can come over to window and select gradient. By default, yours will probably look something like this. Just click on this little slider and you will be able to tweak more options. So the first thing we want to do is to change the angle to 90 degree because by default, the gradient goes from left to right. We want it to go top to down. So now we have changed our little rectangle to vertical. If you forgot to select it like me, just click out to select it and press on the gradient slider again. It will apply whatever gradient to your little rectangle. So let me just zoom out so we can see the entire length. And I need to redo what I did, which is to change the angle to 90 degree. So the next thing I want to do is to move my black slider to the middle. So the belly of this rectangle is darker. And I do want to add another reference point over here. As you can see, as you hover to the end of the spectrum, you will see a little plus. Make sure you don't click on the slider or on the belt. Make sure you click just outside. So you're adding another point. And you can double click to change that to white. Just bring this all the way down. Yours may look different, but anyway, you should be able to change it to white very easily. And then I do want to increase the dark belly size a little bit and make sure I have the rectangle selected and come over to effect and effect gallery. That will let us see all the fun Photoshop effect that we have, but in Illustrator, this is tiny. I can't even see it. So I'm going to Click on the plus sign to make sure this is at a reasonable size. If it looks a little bit pixelated, don't worry. So there are different kinds of textures that you can play with. Basically, I want some type of grain. So currently I am using the graphic pen under sketch. And you can play with the slider to decide what is your stroke length or what the dark light balance would be. So this looks fine. So I'm just going to click on OK. So now we have the task of vectorize this guy. So currently this is still an effect. We want to come over to object 
and expand appearance, which will turn this into an image. As you can see, the bounding box has become really unreasonably large. That's a good sign. And you want to use your image trace function. I have it stacked over here just because I use it so often. If you don't have it, you can come over to window and click on image trace. It's pretty simple. Just make sure you have the image selected and, and select black and white for mode. And you do want to expand the advanced panel and do a couple of things. First, you do want to check the ignore white, which basically just tells Illustrator you won't pick up the white color. And then you want to turn on the preview to see the result. As you can see, we already have some really jagged edges and you can play with the threshold to see how rough or how smooth your final result is going to be. If you want it to be really rough and fuzzy, you want to turn the pass value all the way to high and play with the threshold. Whenever you are happy, go ahead and click on expand over here at the top. And now you have a basic material to make your brush. So once we're done vectorizing, as you can see, we have this little path on our wiggly lines. You want to come over to object and pattern and make. That will take you to the pattern making tool. So you do want to find the connection point in this case. It's kind of dense and hard to see. So I'm going to increase the height. So I have a little bit of breathing room. Maybe change it to 20 pixels instead of four. So much better. And you also want to round the numbers. For example, I'm going to go for 145. To make your future steps a little bit easier, you want to do minus 20 pixels. Just make your bonding box smaller than your actual brush. The result is not super obvious, which is great because the major thing we want to inspect at this stage is to make sure we can't easily tell where the brush starts and where does it end. In this case, it seems pretty seamless, which is great. So you want to take down this number, which is 125 by 20 or whatever number you are or whatever or whatever number you have and click on done. And immediately you want to create a rectangle that is that size. So click on M and 125 by 20 pixels. It seems pretty odd. I want to just change my stroke to black. So that's the bounding box size. And now you want to double click on your new pattern. And just click on whatever highlights in the middle and command C. Cancel and command V to paste it. You want to just position your little brush right in the middle. And make sure it touches the left and the right edge. And you can bring down the height of your bonding box as small as you can. Make sure you have a little bit of clearance so you don't accidentally cut anything off. And you want to turn off the black stroke at this point while it's still selected and bring this guy all the way to the back, which can be done by right click and arrange, send to back or command shift left bracket. Now you want to drag and select both and come over to brushes panel. If you don't have it stacked conveniently over here, you can always go to window and select brushes and then click on this new brush icon. In the dialog box, you want to select pattern brush and click on OK. Basically, you will be able to see how your brush look like. By default, everything looks great and you can just change the colorization method to hue shift. This basically allow you to change the color of your line. It wouldn't make sense if you can only draw black lines, right? 
So click on OK. Now we have a little brush. I'm just going to zoom back out and clear my artboard and press N for a pencil and just freehand a random line and make sure my stroke is in front and I want to select my little new pattern texture brush. Voila! Here's your final result. So now you have your little handmade organic liner brush. If you have enjoyed this tutorial, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel. If you would like to grow your design and illustration skills, I would love for you to check out my Skillshare classes, where I teach my design process in depth. In the description box, you will find a link that will give you two months for free.